right, this is unit six, lesson five, properties of logarithms. So our lesson essential question is, how are the properties of logarithms used to simplify expressions and solve logarithmic equations? At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to use properties of logarithms to write, rewrite expressions. All right, concept. Properties of logarithms. So just as we had properties of exponents, we also have properties of logarithms. So for positive numbers, b, m, and n, so b, m, and n, with b not equal to one, the following properties hold. Log base b, m, n equals log base b, m plus log base b, n. Okay, so that's the product property. So if I was multiplying them, then I can add those two logs together. For the quotient property of logarithms, log base b m divided by n equals log base b m minus log base b n. Okay, so when I multiply, I can add, and when I divide, I can subtract. Okay, then you have the power property of logarithms. So I'm raising a power to, so I'm raising a log to a power. So log base b m to the nth power equals n log base b m. So you're bringing that n down in front. All right, example one, prove a property of logarithms. So how can you prove the product property of logarithms? So let x equal log base b m and y equal log base b n. Then b to the x equals m and b to the y equals n. Remember the opposite of a logarithm is an exponential function where that value, that x or y value is that exponent, right? So, b to the x times b to the y equals m times n. So I multiply the expressions b to the x plus b to the y. By the product property of exponents, remember when we multiply two exponents with the bases that are the same, I can add the exponents together. So b to the x plus y equals mn. I rewrite it as an exponential, from exponential to logarithmic form. So I have x plus y equals log sub b m to the nth. So log, log base b to the m plus log base b n equals log base b m n. All right, let's try it. Prove the quotient property of logarithms. So we're going to let x equal log base b m and y equal log base b n. So then b to the x equals n m and b to the y equals n. So b to the x over b to the y equals m over n. here b to the x minus y so this is my quotient property of exponents they have the same base so i can subtract their exponents equals m over n so x minus y i'm going to rewrite this from an exponential into a logarithmic form so remember this becomes my answer equals log base b m over n. And then I'm going to substitute in my x and my y values. So log, again, log base b m minus log base b n equals log base b m over n. Example two, how can you use the properties of logarithms to expand the expression log base five, a squared b to the seventh? So I can rewrite this using the product property and then the power property. So the product property tells me that I can um, separate this log, this a squared and this b to the seventh by putting an addition sign in between them and having them both be to log base b. 
And then the power property of logarithms tells me that I can bring this exponent down in front. So I get 2 log base 5a plus 7 log base 5b. How can you use the properties of logarithms to expand the expression ln 25 over 3? Okay, so I can rewrite the numerator as a power. So 25 is 5 squared. Okay, so I want to simplify it as much as possible. Because this is division, opposite of division is subtraction. Or not the opposite. Similar is subtraction, so quotient property. So I do ln 5 squared minus ln 3. Remember, this power property tells me I can bring this 2 out front. So I have 2 ln 5 minus ln 3. So I want to use the properties of logarithms to expand each expression. So I have log base 7, r cubed t to the fourth over v. Okay, so when I do this, this is going to be the quotient property. So I have log base 7, r cubed t to the fourth minus log base 7 of v. Okay, now r cubed t to the fourth, I can actually use the product property. So I have log base 7 r cubed plus log base 7 t to the fourth. minus log a7v, okay, and then I can use the power property to bring that out in front. So I'll have to bring my exponents out in front, so I have 3 log base 7 r plus 4 log base 7 t minus log base 7 v. Okay, for B, I have ln um, to 7 over 225. So again, I want to rewrite these um, as simplified as possible. So 225, I want to see how I can factor that out. 225 can be factored. 3 squared. All right, so 225 equals... 3 times 3 times, times 5. Okay, so which is a squared times 5 squared, just so we know. So I'm going to rewrite this as ln of 7 over 3 squared, all squared. Now I can use the quotient uh, product of logarithms. So I have ln 7 minus ln 3 squared times 5 squared. And then this is the product property. So I can do ln 7 minus ln 3 squared plus ln 5 squared. Okay. And then I can use the power of product property. So ln 7 minus 2 ln, oops, ln 3 plus 2 ln 5. Okay, and notice I still have this subtraction sign out front because I was subtracting the ln 3 squared minus or times 5 squared. So I need to distribute that. So I have ln 7 minus 2 ln 3 minus 2 ln 5. At example 3, write expressions as single logarithms. So what is the expression written as a single logarithm? So what we just did in the previous example was we were expanding everything. So now we're going to shrink it down into its smallest form. So we're compressing it. Okay? Um, that's what they mean by writing it as a single log logarithm. So 4 log 4m plus 3 log base 4n minus log base 4p. Okay, so they all have a log base 4. 
I have a plus here and a minus here. So I know that I'm going to be dealing with a product and a quotient property. And I also know that this four out front and this three out front means that I'm going to have exponents. So I basically am going to start working backwards. So four log base four M plus three log base four N becomes log base four M to the fourth plus log base four N to the third. This is product property. So I rewrite it as log base four m to the fourth n cubed minus log base four p. We know that this is the quotient property, this minus. Okay, so that means I have log base four m to the fourth n cubed over p. And that is my final expression. What is the expression written as a single logarithm? Three ln two minus two ln five. So I have 3ln2 minus 2ln5. Okay, so this is power. I'm going to work backwards again. So the power property. So it becomes ln2 cubed minus ln5 squared. Uh, this is quotient property. So it becomes ln2 cubed over 5 squared. And then 2 cubed is 8 and 5 squared is 25. So I simplify my exponents. All right, so let's try it. Write each expression as a single logarithm. So I have 5 log base 2c minus 7 log base 2n. So I have 5 log base 2c minus 7 log base 2n. So I'm going to use the power property. So this becomes log base 2 of c to the fifth minus log base 2 n to the seventh. This will then, um, the subtraction tells me that it's quotient property. So this becomes log base two of C to the fifth over N to the seventh. Okay. And that is my final answer. Okay. For B, I have two LN seven plus LN two. So I'm gonna rewrite this, so I have two LN seven plus ln2, which is going to become ln7 squared using the power property plus ln2, okay? And then this is a product, so it's going to be ln7 squared times 2, which gives me ln7 squared is 49 times 2, and then 49 times 2 is 98. Anytime you're dealing with just numbers, you want to simplify it as much as possible. All right, example four, apply properties of logarithms. So the pH of a solution is a measure of its concentration of hydrogen ions. This concentration measured in moles per liter is written H to the positive power and is given by the formula pH equals log one over H to the positive. What is the concentration of hydrogen ions in the acid rainfall? Okay, so here's pH of the solution. Here's my acid range. The pH level is 4.5. Okay. So I have 4.5 equals log one over H plus so 4.5 equals log one minus log H plus. Remember that's the quotient property. So negative 4.5. So they took, um, they're solving for log H plus. So they did, um, they just switched the signs here because log one is one. So negative 4.5 equals log H plus because this was minus. So they switched it to the other side, which means they switched the 4.5 to the other side. Or they just multiply three by negative one. Either way, it's the same thing. Okay, so then I have 10. Remember, there's no base here, which means that it's the common base of 10. So 10 to the negative four fifth equals H plus. So that's an exponential form. So the concentration of hydrogen ions in the acid rainfall is 10 to the negative 4.5 or approximately 0 0.00003.16 moles per liter. All right, so let's try it. The pH of a solution is a measure of its concentration of hydrogen ions. What is the concentration of hydrogen ions in a liter of orange juice? So I have my pH, which is three. So three equals log one 
one over. Okay. Now I want to solve for my hydrogen, my hydrogen ions. So I have three equals log one minus, remember that's the quotient, log of H hydrogen. Okay. Now I want to solve for my hydrogen ion. So I have three equals negative log log of one is zero. So then I want to switch my sign. So I have negative three equals log H plus. Um, so then I want to rewrite it in exponential form. So this is base 10 to the negative third equals. So my hydrogen ions are 10 to the negative third moles per liter or 0 0.001 moles per liter. All right, example five, evaluate logarithmic expressions by changing the base. So how can you use base 10 logarithms to evaluate base two logarithms? So to evaluate log base two three with a calculator, you actually need to express log base two, two log base two three in terms of base 10 logarithms. So it has to be a common base, okay? Most calculators will not let you do a base of anything other than 10 in a calculator. So we need to learn to change the base of something like this in order to be able to solve it easily in a calculator. So log base two, three equals log base two, three times log base two over log base two. Okay, so I'm multiplying it by one, which is in the form of log two. Okay, so this, whatever this base happens to be. Okay. I can then use the power property of logarithms to tell me that log two to log base two, three over log base two. Since two log base two, three equals three, the numerator specifies, simplifies to log three. Okay. Remember that exponents and logarithms are inverse, inverse operations, so they undo one another. Okay. So this becomes log three over log two which I can then use a calculator to evaluate. So this illustrates the change of base formula for positive numbers m, b, and a, with b cannot be equal to 1 and a can't equal 1. So log base b, m, equals log base a, m, over log base a, b. Okay. So basically, in order to change it to a power of 10, I take this number, that's my top number, and this number, my base, and that's my bottom number. So I want to estimate the value of each logarithm, then use a calculator to find the value of each logarithm to the nearest thousands. So according to the change of base formula, so log is 2, 7 becomes log 7 over log 2, okay? which then simplifies to 0 0.845 over... Uh, 0 0.301 equals 3. Okay. Uh, so this equals 2.807. Okay. I actually rounded to a couple numbers, so I got something slightly different. Um, but if you actually put it in as log 7 divided by log 2, this is what you get, the 2.807 rounded to three numbers. Okay. So log base five of three, the same thing as saying log three divided by log five, which will give you zero point 
six eight three. And I actually get those on my calculator. That's what I get. Okay. So in order to get the log function on this calculator, I actually hit the math button. This one. Okay. Um, you can see that I have a menu at the top. So I'm actually going to go over all the way to where it says log. So use the arrow buttons to where it says log. And then I hit enter. Okay, so it takes me to this menu, which gives me my log. Okay. Then I enter the number. So in that case, seven, close parentheses, divide, and repeat the whole process again. So I go math over, enter, The wrong button, enter, and then two, whatever it happened to be. What was that one? Yep, two. Two, close parentheses, enter, there's my answer. All right, example six, use the change of base formula. So what is the solution of the equation to the x equals seven? Express the solution as a logarithm and then evaluate, round to the nearest thousand. Okay, so to the x equals seven, I write the, the equation again. Okay, I rewrite it in logarithmic form. So remember my two to the x, my x becomes, goes on this side, equals log base two, seven, okay? So then I use my change of base formula. So remember, base 2 goes on the bottom. The 7 goes on the top. So log 7 over log 2. So x is approximately 2.807. And I can always double check. 2 to the 2.807 does equal approximately 7. All right, so let's try it. What is the solution to the equation 3 to the x equals 15? Express the solution as a logarithm, make an estimate, and then evaluate. Round to the nearest thousand. So we know that 3 times 5 gives us 15. 3 squared is 9. Okay, 3 cubed is 27. So it's going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. Okay, so I have 3 to the x equals 15. So I'm going to rewrite this in logarithmic form. So that's x equals log base 3, 15. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite, use the change of base form. So I have log 15 over log 3. And I'm going to plug it into my calculator. So x is approximately 2.46. You can always double check going back. So it is between 2 and 3. All right, concept summary, properties of logarithms. So we have the product property, the quotient property, the power property, and then the change of base formula. Okay, so four major things in this unit, this chapter. Okay, so I my product property tells me that I can split these up when they're multiplied. If they have the same base, I can add them together. I can rewrite them as an addition. Okay, so log of a product is the sum of the logs. So for quotient, so if I'm dividing and they have the same base, I can rewrite it as a subtraction or a difference of logs. Okay, power property. So if it's raised to a power, the log of a number raised to a power is the power multiplied by the log of the number. And then my change of base, log base BM equals log base A over M over log base AB. Okay, so where A equals 10. So the log base B of a number is equal to the log base A of the number divided by the log base A of B. And that is the end of unit six, lesson five.